Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we have a load of stuff which has been sent in. Um, this is all from Bart in New Zealand. And uh, there's a whole uh, bag of stuff here. And another bag of stuff here. So uh, let's have a look and uh, see what we've got. Now here's all the stuff that uh, Bart has sent in. And so this has come from all the way from New Zealand. So uh, thank you very much, Bart, for sending in all of this stuff. And as you can see, they're all actually individually numbered. And I've also got a list here of all of the things which have been sent in with the uh, description and some comments as well. So uh, we'll certainly have a look through those and uh, see what we've actually got here. Now, the voltage in New Zealand is uh, essentially the same as the UK. It's 240 and uh, frequency is the same 50 hertz. So uh, fairly similar in that regard. But the uh, plugs and sockets there are completely different. And uh, this is the sort of style. It's also the one that's used in Australia. So you've got your three uh, flat pins with the uh, two at the various angles and of course the earth being the slightly longer one. Now uh, these three here, this is actually an inline socket and uh, description here says it's got illegal single insulated uh, two core wire that's in there, that's sort of that sort of uh, almost bell wire type stuff and again that's not permitted in the UK either although it certainly was used here for a considerable number of years. Uh, old Christmas tree lights being the uh, probably last thing to actually use that. And again, this is uh, some sort of brown Bakelite type material. And then we've got a plug here, which is a uh, socket on one side and plug on the other. So sort of a uh, piggyback arrangement. And again, no cord attached to this one, but of course you would plug that in. And then you've still got the uh, socket on the top to uh, place another plug into. And again, we've got a single plug here. And uh, unsleeved pins, uh, the new ones do have the uh, sleeved pins as on this piece here. But uh, as with the UK, it uh, wasn't actually a requirement up to a date. And the notes we've got here say it was actually uh, required from 2005. And the plug here, uh, again, the notes we've got uh, say you can actually get special versions of a four core cord. And uh, you can actually allow a device to uh, switch the uh, feedback load here so you could plug this in. And then have some, like a say, temperature control as the example there, which then could control the actual socket outlet. So it's quite an ingenious arrangement. Now, I've only ever seen one thing in the UK that's similar to this, and uh, there is a picture of this on the website, and so it's the only one I've ever seen. So, if this uh, sort of thing did exist in the UK, it was certainly an uncommon type of item. But uh, so here's the New Zealand equivalent. And of course, these are all fairly old items, got with the unsleeved pins and the uh, brown Bakelite style there. Now, here we've got some uh, rather more up to date items, and this is the uh, plug, of course. And notice it's got the sleeved pins there for the line neutral, and earth is unsleeved. And the corresponding uh, socket here, which again is a fairly up to date and uh, newer item. And notice it says here approved to Australian standards. Of course, it's the same design as uh, used in Australia, so of course, uh, they're going to make the same uh, packaging, presumably, for both of those. And that's just your plug, which would fit onto the uh, cord there. And again, this is your uh, inline item, which would, of course, put on the end of SA extension cord or whatever. So you've got your plug there, and then your lead would come out of the back of that. And say 10 amp rating. So again, 240 volts, so it's uh, say not too dissimilar from the UK, I was a 13, but again, it's reasonably similar to that. Now this one is uh, another plug here, but it actually has the cord entry from the rear. And um, let's take this out of the bag and have a closer look at this one. So again, you've got the uh, plug on the front there, and the, so the cord actually comes through the rear of this. And this is made of a rather odd sort of fairly soft plastic. So just to remove it there. As you see, it's quite a flexible and uh, bendy arrangement. There's certainly no equivalent to that uh, really in the UK. And of course, your uh, plug will fit into there. And then your cord comes out the back as uh, compared to this style here, which of course is just the right angle arrangement, so a fairly common style as uh, say similar to the UK version. But as I say, it's a quite a well, very soft and uh, bendy material. And then the back piece here, of course, just clamps down to uh, grip onto the cord as it exits there. And it's also a good note, these come with quite nice instructions here, printed in uh, colour. And uh, certainly a lot better than some of the things you get with the UK efforts, which is normally just a little card piece. 
crammed over the pins and uh, that's quite often all you get so uh, certainly a far better arrangement there and again these got the sleeved pins as well obviously for the new standards required and again your earth at the top there so in terms of assembly that uh, flexible piece uh, just press it over the outside of that and uh, I mean, it really is really uh, secured in there so no actual screws required to attach the back to that and of course the transparent bit means you can see through to ensure your connections are all properly attached and you can get transparent plugs in the UK but they're generally the hard plastic variety and again for the same reason so you can see in and of course uh, confirm that the thing is wired correctly and now we have these terrible things which are surprisingly similar to the ones that you can get in the UK and uh, as I have done a video on uh, something very similar to this before it's the uh, for export only uh, laughingly labelled travel adapters which are uh, Chinese in origin and uh, frequently supplied with uh, Chinese type products and it's got this uh, as with the UK ones the usual uh, fits all and fits nothing on the back and of course the uh, pins on the reverse and notice that these are unsleeved so of course not permitted in New Zealand and uh, the UK ones are not sleeved either and they're not permitted in the UK and in fact I doubt very much that these are actually permitted for use anywhere they're just uh, terrible items these are marked uh, 10 amps 250 volts but uh, I wouldn't uh, want to put uh, 10 amps anywhere near those they're certainly uh, extremely doubtful and dubious and of course you've got those uh, live exposed parts if it's only partially inserted and of course one fits into the other and then we've got this two pin uh, this is just a plug to fit on the end of a uh, cord there again unsleeved pins and uh, certainly not uh, up to the required standards and of course this is probably what comes on your item two flat pins are the uh, presumably that's the Chinese uh, standard there shove it in that and then in theory you can uh, use that in uh, New Zealand or in fact whichever country they care to supply with but as with the UK one I've done it fits in incredibly poorly and the slightest pressure it's just going to drop out so uh, certainly not recommended and so the note provided uh, again says that they're illegal in New Zealand and of course uh, not entirely surprising why so the realm of uh, Chinese poor quality rubbish uh, really extends everywhere apparently this plug you can it's actually for sale in New Zealand which uh, as the note says is rather strange because of course this is not going to fit into any of the New Zealand sockets I mean there's your New Zealand socket and pretty obviously uh, two vertical bins are not going to fit into uh, two angled sockets there so uh, I've got a mystery while that's for sale there but certainly uh, a rather doubtful item with its uh, unsleeved pins and uh, perhaps maybe rated at 15 amps although uh, I suppose it might be but uh, certainly not recommended to try that at the current rating so now I've got here a uh, piggyback extension lead and again it's got this sort of piggyback type plug so you can plug this into your socket on the wall and then you've still got another socket on the back to use for something else as well as the of course extended one at the end of the lead there and it's got this uh, recessed piece around here so that when the as well as the sleeved pins when the plug goes in because it's preventing any access to get through and uh, actually get in contact with the pins in the bottom there so it's quite a nice design feature there and the edge of that is let's say fairly flexible on that as well and so you don't see these types of piggyback plugs in the UK at all they're certainly uh, most uncommon and uh, the note from Bart says that uh, actually making a power cord from one of these is actually significantly cheaper than buying the plug and the cord separately or buying a pre-made cord with the bare end so uh, basically you can just buy this cut the socket off and then there's your sort of power cord to uh, fit your appliance as needed and that's similar to uh, the UK situation where it's often the case that buying a pre-assembled item like this is uh, just so much cheaper than the components themselves as it's all mass-produced and uh, probably made in China. Yes, made in China, there it is, so uh, no surprise there. Although not, of course, everything made in China is terrible. This just seems to be a perfectly reasonable example. It's just the incredibly low cost of uh, volume manufacturing over there. And here we've got a four-way uh, power board or adapter and uh, we'll take this out of the bag and again it's just got the uh, single standard plug on the end there again sleeve pins with the four individual outlets and uh, interesting feature of these is the uh, 
cutout actually built in the recessed button on the end there and apparently that's a compulsory feature on these things. Now the UK ones, some of them were made with a fuse in the end, like a little cartridge fuse. Most of them are not now and the uh, plugs in the UK do have the cartridge fuse in, but certainly things with the uh, an actual uh, magnetic or uh, thermal cutout in the end is certainly not something uh, you would see and uh, apparently this is compulsory in uh, New Zealand. So rating this one uh, yeah, again, it's just the 10 amps, uh, same as the plug, of course, 240 volts, so 2,400 watts. And this is quite a uh, short example, but uh, again, it seems uh, reasonably well made. And of course, uh, all that fit in there quite nicely, and uh, they've also put the plugs on an uh, angle there, so uh, whether that's a uh, standard arrangement or not is not entirely clear there. The plug is quite good actually, the end of it is quite uh, bendy as you can see there, but then say the UK ones are just as bad if not worse, so not uh, too surprising. Rather interesting arrangement with those slots on the back there, so uh, yeah, it's obviously for fixing it to a wall or whatever, but one is horizontal and the other one is vertical, so not entirely clear how uh, that's supposed to work. Now these sockets don't appear to have any kind of uh, shutters in there, you can actually see the metal terminals down in there without uh, anything in the way of them. But again, because of the thinness of the pins, it's uh, less likely you're going to get things uh, poked in there. And we've had a look on this one, and I think this may have uh, the same kind of situation. Yeah, you can actually see the, probably can't see on the camera, but uh, you can actually see the metal down in the bottom there. Now here we have a double adapter, and again there's the uh, plug on one side, and it's got two uh, sockets on the back there. We'll uh, just take that out of the bag as well. Yeah, 10 amp rating, and uh, so just one with the two outlets on the back there. Uh, again, on the fuse, that are the UK varieties of these, and the UK ones particularly, you can plug uh, two 13 amp appliances in and to a single 13 amp outlet, which clearly is not uh, particularly acceptable. And again, this will uh, fit in there with the uh, sort of angled arrangement. So the, the plugs, they do fit in quite tightly, actually. They're, uh, because the contacts are recessed fairly down at the bottom there, they go in fairly loosely to start with, and then once you get to the actual contact part, it's uh, quite a good secure fixing. So, reason enough, this seems to be made out of some kind of polycarbonate type plastic, probably uh, a fairly low quality item, and it's got those hideous, uh, or actually it's got a hideous screw with only one fixing the whole thing together, and it's one of those dreadful. Uh, triangular jobs which uh, we have encountered on uh, other adapters in the past so obviously designed to be uh, non-openable and they've only put one screw on it. I don't wonder why they don't just glue the things together and uh, not bother with the screw really but uh, there we go so uh, another adapter there and uh, the last item in this particular section is this plug with the uh, sort of figure of eight type lead on the end and notice this is just a two pin plug there again with the sleeved pins there and uh, apparently if the uh, sockets have shutters they don't require the earth pin to operate them unlike the UK ones so you can of course just uh, plug straight in there and of course no earth pin is required so this goes in no problem and again that's uh, quite a reasonably good fixing as well so despite the thinness of the pins it does have a uh, decently firm fixing now have a look at some of the uh, wall outlets, and uh, this is a fairly old one, this is uh, I think from the 1960s, older style of course in the brown uh, Bakelite, and uh, this and quite a few of these others come from this place called Musgroves, which apparently is a uh, shop which sells recycled building materials and electrical stuff being part of that, that's certainly an unusual uh, type of outlet. And this one apparently is broken internally, so uh, let's, uh, let's have a look and uh, take the uh, cover off. And see there's just the uh, cover, single moulding piece with the three terminals inside. The uh, terminals there have been certainly uh, 
well uh, pried apart by uh, something. And as you look there, see it's broken. Uh, the actual plastic has broken away at the bottom there on that piece. So uh, of course it would be theoretically possible to uh, shove a uh, somewhat wider pin in there, and of course uh, contact the live pieces in the back. And so just two holes for the uh, mounting there, and the wiring came straight out the back into uh, whatever it's fixed onto, presumably a uh, wooden block or similar. And that's uh, so fairly similar to the UK style from that sort of age. Now this one is an unswitched uh, outlet, of course, that's a flush mounting uh, from the wall. And again, marked on the back with the uh, neutral earth and uh, P for uh, phase, presumably. That's the three tones on the back. So a bit of a chip on this one. This is obviously a much older item. And again, this is uh, sort of 60s or uh, earlier. Same rating as the uh, modern ones, of course, the 240 volt. And uh, there is some uh, remnants of the writing on the front there. It's uh, quite a large plate, actually, considering the uh, size of the outlet there. So uh, I've got this uh, sort of extended uh, width on that one. And uh, this in a uh, similar vein, this uh, apparently was manufactured from the 1960s to the 1980s. And this obviously has a switch included. Of course, same style and size of plate. Obviously it's a bit curved, this is a more square one, but certainly fit onto the same style of mounting box. Uh, the back of this one is somewhat more enclosed, but you've still got all of the terminals uh, fairly well exposed all around the sides. But of course that one is just uh, a much smaller plate on the back. And again, this has, uh, of course, got some damage there, so the earth pin is uh, obviously broken away, the plastic there. And if we just take the uh, plug there, of course, it will uh, fit in there. But as the note says, this is extremely worn and certainly shouldn't be used, and there's apparently a problem with the earth continuity on this one. And in fact, we can actually see the uh, earth continuity problem in the top layer. We don't actually have to test that one. So uh, we'll just have a look there. we we'll see that when the pin is in there, it doesn't actually make contact with the metal side of the socket contact. So it does in that position, but uh, of course not uh, in some of the others. So certainly a uh, highly dubious and uh, worn out item. Though of course it was probably okay when it was new, but of course that being uh, several decades ago. Uh, brand of that one is PDL. And again, the 10 amp rating the same. Now this is another similar style to that uh, one we just had there, but this is a double one, two on the same plate. And you get the switches there. And uh, rather interesting, you've got these little finger turn screws here, and presumably a similar things would be used uh, with this one. And I think I've actually got some of those in, uh, yeah, in this separate bag over here. So yeah, just the sort of plastic top there, and the threaded brass uh, at the bottom, so you can actually undo these basically just with your fingers, and then of course take the whole thing out of the wall. And this has a metal back box on this one. And the uh, design of these switches actually very similar to the uh, GEC range, and the, uh, the MUTAC or MUTAC ones, which were fairly common in the sort of 40s and 50s here. They're probably uh, completely unrelated. Again, we've got this uh, PDL uh, manufacturer there, and the same on the actual back box uh, there itself. Uh, apparently this is a 1950s style of uh, alloy back box. And the newer ones are somewhat different to that, apparently. So that's uh, something similar to that uh, single one, only just with two on the same plate. Now this is the modern style of uh, socket outlet, and notice how much smaller it is from the uh, older one there. It's uh, so roughly half the size. And uh, switches at each corner there. And uh, again on the back here it's the uh, very much smaller terminals there, active uh, earth and neutral, neutral being in white. We have brass terminals there, and I have a look in the back there, you'll see it's engineered in New Zealand, but of course uh, made in uh, PRC or People's Republic of China. And sadly, that's uh, where a lot of things are going now, whether they're uh, well made or not, they're going to be made over there. So that's the uh, modern style. Notice there's no uh, visible fixing screws as the, presumably the front plate just uh, clips off there. Yeah, so there we go, just that part would, uh, of course, uh, fix into the wall. Then your uh, decorative cover plate just snaps over the top. And again, same rating, the 10 amps there. And uh, 250 volt actually printed on the bottom of the 
actual switches there, which is an odd place to put it, but to no less uh, same rating as the others. And that's where you just fit that in. Just snap your mounting or cover plate over the front. So that's the modern style there. And we also have some screws here for those uh, modern style sockets. And again, very similar arrangement to the uh, UK ones there, just the threaded machine screws going into the back box. Now here we've got a single socket outlet and uh, again, just a single switch on the single plate there. Again, the same uh, physical dimensions as the older style, of course somewhat more up to date there. Now this is a clip cell one, you can buy uh, clip cell items in the UK as well. Uh, this panel was one made in Australia, so uh, not China, which is uh, certainly a novel item. And it's got little markings there for the wire length. A decent sized uh, brass terminals on the back again, and again marked to AEN, so they'll be active earth and neutral rather than uh, L as you would normally see in the UK. And uh, the switch is actually rather small, I think, there. And you've also got the uh, rating printed on the switch bottom as well, so 10 amps and uh, 250 volts. Uh, so you probably can't get that on the camera, but it's printed on the lower edge of the switch there. And these apparently were manufactured from the 1980s onward. And you also get little caps to put over the fixing screws. Yeah, there's one on the back, so you would put a screw in and then the cap would just pop in place to uh, possibly get a slightly tidier finish. Now here's a rather strange uh, combination of items. We've got a single unswitched socket here, and on the uh, other side here we've actually got an outlet for a radio well, probably radio or possibly a television antenna. And of course there's your single socket on the back with the uh, three brass terminals. And then this would be a uh, 300 ohm uh, connection for a uh, sort of ribbon type antenna. Got this plate here to also divide the uh, mains part from the uh, aerial part itself. Um, this box is actually unrelated but it does fit on the back of that uh, fairly well. Again, the two screws just go through to fix that in position. Extremely old, it says. Uh, there's no date on this, but uh, 51T it says there. So I'd say it's a reasonable idea, but uh, probably not something you're going to uh, need to use these days. So that's your 300 ohm. Uh, it's probably an FM uh, type antenna for a uh, radio. So it probably could be used for a TV, but. Uh, Aerial for a radio seems uh, rather more likely. And this box then, uh, number 34, is a modern style apparently. It can be used horizontally or vertically. So that's what sort of goes on the wall. And you've got your two uh, metal inserts for the fixing screws there. And uh, also your cutouts for the cables. Not tight to clear why it's got the uh, sort of stepped arrangement there, but Nevertheless, that uh, older item uh, does actually fit in there rather well. You've got the uh, plastic piece comes right up to the top and blocks that off uh, rather well, even though they're not specifically made to go together. Now, there's a single switch here for a light or uh, similar, and a very large plate on this, again, similar style to the socket there with the removable cover plate, so you don't actually see any of the fixing screws. Again, just uh, three uh, or four terminals on the back there. Again, no real uh, marking on that one, made in New Zealand in this case, so definitely not a Chinese item. And uh, just uh, pry the plate off. Again, it's the same two fixing screws, so just that style of back box will presumably fit on the back of there. Yep, no problem at all. And of course that just snaps over afterwards to uh, make it a sort of tidier appearance. And apparently you get plates which have up to six different modules in them, so uh, it's obviously just having a single switch in the centre there. Terminal wasn't about, I've got four there, so between it's three for the switch there. We've got markings of uh, yeah, one C, some of the common, and uh, two. And then everyone here's marked uh, loop on the top, so uh, I'll just uh, spare terminal there to tune the wires through to the next outlet. This is a surface mounting box, and uh, it's obviously a fairly new item as well. 
So you can just uh, attach that on the wall and then your switch or whatever will uh, fit onto the front of that. And this one, which is a somewhat older item, is the uh, double equivalent of that. And uh, this section we've got some uh, fuses and a uh, circuit breaker there. Now we've got this uh, ceramic example here. And it comes with a ceramic base as well, so you've got your two terminals, obviously uh, one coming in and the other going to your circuit wiring. And then the fuse uh, just plugs in over the top, so you've got the twin contacts there, which of course go over the sides of those. A little uh, spring pieces on the side just to secure the wire into. It's basically just a uh, wrap-in design, so yeah, there's no actual uh, screw to attach the fuse wire, it just simply uh, slots underneath the uh, little tab at the end there, and of course the same at the other end, the piece is broken off of that one. And a single fixing screw in the centre, and of course the wiring would come in and uh, go out via the back there. And of course the problem with these is that uh, if you don't turn off the power first, of course you know, that's uh, covered up there, and you take that away, then of course one of these is going to be live at all times, so uh, certainly not something which will be permitted today. And we've got a slightly larger one here. This is actually glazed as well. That's fairly, uh, it is glazed, but it's a fairly rough uh, finish on that one. 15 amps and NZI, which apparently is New Zealand insulators. Again, similar design inside with the two terminal central screw fixing. And again, the fuse wire just wraps around that little tab at the end, uh, which goes through the uh, centre of this uh, ceramic piece here. So those both uh, similar examples of the same design. Now this brown one is uh, apparently Ambrico, which uh, was actually made in England, it says. I've got to read on there, it's got red paint on it. And uh, this particular one, again, massive uh, likelihood of touching the uh, live terminals there. And uh, when this is placed in here, I see that there's plenty of uh, possibility of actually touching the metal parts as you remove it. So uh, certainly not a uh, particularly wonderful design. Again, similar arrangement with the fuse wire connections there with a little tab there to wind the wire around. And of course, uh, hollow bits on the side so you can uh, get to those dangerous terminals even more easily. Compared to these, which at least have got the uh, flat sides there. And uh, again, this one the same. So at least it keeps your fingers uh, slightly away from the dangerous parts where of course this one is uh, somewhat recessed so uh, very easy to accidentally touch the contacts when removing it. And a uh, slightly more modern item here now. This is obviously a circuit breaker and again a similar base but again you've got those exposed terminals there. And these are actually very similar design to the uh, Wilex ones you could buy in the UK typically in the 1980s. Of course the uh, back is uh, somewhat different. Again, they've marked uh, NZI there for the uh, New Zealand insulators again, presumably. And apparently this one was uh, a circa 1970s, so again, very similar to the Wilex ones you could get in the UK at the time. And also the uh, connection on the back are different, just with the twin pin arrangement. And of course, designed no doubt to directly replace the older fuse type, so just simply replace the base there, single screw and change the wiring, and. Uh, supposedly a slightly more up-to-date installation and apparently the uh, modern ones or the modern bases rather have the shrouded terminals of course for uh, additional safety whereas these are completely exposed if you unplug the circuit breaker. Uh, this is a 20 amp one uh, I'm not sure how common those were in the or in New Zealand but uh, certainly in the UK a 20 amp was the uh, most uncommon variety uh, 5, 15 and 30 were being far more common and I've got some uh, actual cable here. Now, uh, this particular one is a uh, one square millimetre, and this is two core and earth, so sort of similar to the twin and earth that we have in the UK, although there's a fairly significant difference, as we'll see here. In that inside, all three of the conductors are actually insulated. Of course, the uh, twin and earth in the UK has the earth in the centre, and that's not even insulated because it's cheaper to make essentially, but uh, this has all three wires uh, insulated there, red and black colouring, and of course green and yellow for the earth one there, so 
That's actually quite better than the uh, Twinneth here. You can see it's all uh, insulated throughout, where, so the UK one, it's uh, just a bare copper piece in the centre. Uh, this one is a similar arrangement, although this is uh, 1.5 uh, square millimetres, and again it's that uh, triple core arrangement, or two cores on earth. And again, notice it's all uh, fully insulated in there, so you've got your line neutral and earth as well. Earth on the outer edge. And again, three uh, insulated separate conductors. This is the uh, heavier duty variety. This is the 2.5 square millimeter. And again, a very similar construction there with the uh, earth on the outside and the uh, line in the center. And again, all three uh, fully insulated. And so this actually strips off rather easily. So uh, quite. Uh, Decent stuff, I think, so that's all right. And then the uh, final cover here is this uh, number one here. Um, this is 1.5 millimeters, but this is actually three phase or three lines and earth. And again, this is size 1.5 millimeters, so or square millimeters. So just open up the end of this if we can. This may be a bit older, it seems to be rather more difficult to undo. Yeah, it says on the notes there, the earth is the old style solid green, as we can hopefully see at the end there. Yes, yeah, so that certainly is uh, older colours, certainly if it was the uh, UK variety. So we've got your earth is a solid green, and then the three lines there are uh, red, white and blue. Now you can get red, white and blue in the UK, but it was only in the uh, I think early 60s that, that was available, and it? Uh, shortly after that changed to yellow, and of course uh, red and blue, and of course these days it's uh, brown, black and grey for some uh, European uh, reason. But uh, yeah, again it's all fully insulated, and uh, again the earth on the outer edge of that. Again, this is obviously a fairly old uh, example. So let's look there at some New Zealand electrical items. And say so most of it uh, seems to be pretty decent quality. Of course, I'm not including the Chinese uh, adapters in that because they're horrible and uh, would be absolutely terrible and legal in pretty much any country. But uh, yeah, the rest of it uh, does seem uh, pretty decent. And even some of the older stuff certainly is uh, of decent construction. And uh, certainly don't mind those at all. Certainly things like the cable, I uh, actually prefer that to the uh, UK version as it's got all of the cores fully insulated, including the uh, earth there. As the uh, UK equivalent of that has the earth as a bare conduction in the centre and then your two insulated ones either side and you have to put your own uh, earth sleeving on, but certainly the fully insulated version uh, seems a lot better. Of course the UK one is done that way because it's cheaper, there's no other particular reason for that. And uh, so these plugs and sockets are the same style as the Australian ones with the uh, three flat pins at the angle there. And of course some of this stuff uh, actually is made in Australia as well. And of course some of the older ones uh, are a bit dodgy there, particularly with that uh, dreadful uh, twin uh, single insulated flex in there. But So we had stuff like that in the UK as well. But of course uh, as for the uh, New Zealand one, no longer permitted. So I'll put pictures of all of this stuff uh, on the website, along with the uh, descriptions as well. That uh, should be going over in the next uh, week or so, as it uh, will take a while to do the pictures there. And uh, thanks to Bart for sending all of this stuff in. And until next time, thanks for watching.